Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Kashrus, presented by the Kashrus Awareness Project in conjunction with Torah Anytime. Today, we are privileged to be joined by Rabbi Pinchas Juravel of Chafgei Kosher. Thank you, Rabbi Juravel, for joining us. Thank you, Rabbi. Now, you've been you've been in Kashrus for quite over twenty-five years. Twenty-five years, can I know her? Many years, many more years in Ritzim. Mm-hmm. Before we get into today's topic, just tell me for a moment, what do you do for the Chafkei? Okay, so I run the flavor division and I run the ingredient database. Which means what? In layman's terms, what does that mean? It means any new ingredient that any Chafke company wants to use has to pass my desk and be approved by me or one uh-huh. of the people who work under me. And uh, the fl- any of the flavor companies, any new ingredient, new product, new formula, any wow. processing change, all that has to be reviewed and approved constantly. Tremendous responsibility, yes. but you have tremendous experience, and that's why we're excited to have you here. Thank you. Today I'd like to ask you a P- Pesach-related question and issue yes. with regard to buying coffee and tea for Pesach. Do, do coffee and tea require special Pesach certification? Can I go to a store, for example, and just take any taster's choice bottle off the shelf and assume that it's kosher or Pesach? Take us through... What and concerns them? This is them an might excellent be. and timely question, and we're going to do our best to answer this in the short time we have today. Any flavored coffee or flavored tea must be specially certified for Pesach. Instant tea or coffee often has additives that can be sensitive for Pesach and needs to be approved or certified for Pesach. Let's talk about basic coffee and basic tea. Let's talk about the process of what happens with coffee and tea and try to understand why certain items we approve without special certification for Pesach and others need certification for Pesach. Coffee, as we all know, grows on a, as a bean on a tree. Tea are, comes off as leaves, which have to be dried and then, and then um, ground down to, or cut to the size of tea that you want to use. Okay, that process, both the drying process, is not normal. Your first glance would be a drying process. What could be wrong with drying something? Okay, now if you dry only coffee beans without any sort of treatment or tea leaves, that is certainly a true statement. That would not be a problem. On the other hand, if you want decaffeinated coffee or you want decaffeinated tea, they need to be treated. And that treatment often happens at the drying process. And that can be, there's actually four different methods of removing caffeine from coffee beans or from tea leaves. And the most popular one, which involves a chemical by the name of ethyl acetate, can be made from chametz. It can also be made from kidneys. It can be kashal pesach. How is one to know? The truth is, at a consumer level, you'll never know. Mm-hmm. They're not going to reveal that to you, and often the people answering customer service at the coffee or tea manufacturer usually will not know the source of, source of ethyl acetate. And the decaffeination process for coffee and tea are identical? Yes. Same. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, generally, decaffe- anything that's decaffeinated, you will need to be reviewed and either certified for Pesach or checked out by one of the kashrus agencies to confirm which process they use. And this is why most of the kashrus agencies publish a list of acceptable coffees and teas and not acceptable coffees and teas for Pesach. These are not necessarily certified for Pesach, but they don't need certification. They've been reviewed the process to see if there's a Pesach issue at hand. Now, New for this year, and very important for everyone to be aware of, for the last probably 20 to 25 years, Lipton decaffeinated tea bags have been acceptable for Pesach. This year there have been some changes that they are no longer acceptable for Pesach. Everybody should keep track of it. Again, if you have them put away from previous years, that's fine. But anything that's produced this past 12 months is not acceptable for Pesach, and you'll need to look for other sources that are 
approved or accepted or certified for Pesach. Okay, now let's come to the next question. When we're drawing something, uh, typically on a uh, belt of an oven or a pan or a dehydrator, so obviously we're using heat well above Yatsa Leather's bite. Okay? If one wants to purchase coffee beans, ground coffee, or tea, that's been, that's not itself is decaffeinated, but is processed on the same dehydrator, which is very common, is that going to affect the kashrus, kashrus the pace of status of the coffee bean or the tea leaves? Mm -hmm. This is an excellent, excellent question. And the Paiskin of most of the larger kashrus agencies have gone through the process and the halacha and felt that it does not affect the kosher status, whereas the more mahadran agencies and their paiskin have taken the position that it could affect the kalim, and therefore one should specifically purchase coffee and tea, even not decaffeinated, that's actually certified for Pesach, not just approved for Pesach. And that's the difference between approved for Pesach and certified. Approved means someone's reviewed the process, but it's not certified for Pesach, and they're going to be following the opinions that allow one to use coffee and tea that's been processed on a dehydrator that was used for decaffeination. Ones that are actually certified for Pesach, will, if an acceptable agency will not, be using the same equipment. Now, is there any difference between different coffee brands or tea brands, or this is something that's across the board? There are certain brands that are do not, if you look at the list, there are certain brands that do not use this method of decaffeination, and those coffees and teas are acceptable. That's even, why it's even, so important. even without certification? Even without certification, but they have to be investigated and have to be checked every single year. year. And that's why... Although we, as consumers, think about Pesach starting Shushan Purim or later, us in the conscious business start working on Pesach, Isru Chag Pesach, of the mm -hmm. previous year. It's an ongoing year-round job for us. What can be acceptable for Pesach? What can we provide for the consumer? And what's going to change this year? And what's gonna, what, what new products can we provide? What old products are going to be problematic? This is an ongoing something that's on our minds year-round. It's well known that uh, when someone asked Reb Chaim Brisker what he's worried about, what he's thinking about on uh, Yom Kippur, Hashanah Yom Kippur, he said, I want to make sure the matzahs that were baked under my heksher were kosher le Pesach without any shilas. We actually start thinking about it now. Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we start thinking about Pesach, Yisru Chag, the Pesach before. Mm -hmm. Now, just to go back to what you said before, you said the Mahadrin certifications require special hashkacha for for Pesach, correct? They certification require that, or approval? The, that the dehydrator is not used for a not decaffeination used, process right. that could be problematic in the, the Yitzel holidays. Where, the, where, whereas there are those who, who do allow say the that, same equipment. Again, can you not, just walk us through the halachic background on a very basic level? What, okay. Why it would be okay, and why there are those who feel that uh, you know okay. you should be concerned. So the chemical ethyl acetate by itself is not not only not edible, it's it tastes horrible, and it's dangerous to eat that itself. And many people can therefore take the position it's nifsal. Mm. If you take a chemical that's nifsal and process it on equipment, your equipment does not lose its kosher peso status. You take something that was originates in chametz, as nifsal me'achil as kelaf, and process it in your oven or stove, it does not affect the kashal basal status of your pot, equipment, stove. On the other hand, when you take this ethyl acetate and blend it in, with the right products and process it in the right way, it can be, it can end up being part of a very, very tasty product. Mm -hmm. So, Again, if you look at it by itself, it's nifsal. If it's nifsal, it should not affect the kosher or pesach status. If 
you say, well, since it can be part of a very healthy and tasteful product, maybe we shouldn't treat it as a nifsal, so then one needs to make sure the equipment does not have this questionable or problematic type of ethyl acetate. Okay, thank you for that background. <laughs> thank you for this primer uh, regarding coffee and tea for Pesach. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Have a chakash or some